Well, brothers and sisters, good morning. Oh, the Lord's grace and peace to every one of you on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. We are here to worship, to rejoice, to be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, uh, I know it has been a busy weekend. We got pretty much all the announcements in here, but I'm sure some of you maybe have something on your heart that you want to say about how the weekend went. So if anyone has any announcements, just speak up. I figured. I kept looking at you out of the corner of my eye now. Thank you, Patty. Are there any more announcements this morning before we begin? Yes. Good. Thank you. A blessed ministry for sure. Well, folks, if there are no more announcements this morning, let us begin today's worship. If you're able, please rise, open your The Faith We Sing hymnal to number 2164, and let us praise God by singing Sanctuary. Thank you. 
Amen. Brothers and sisters, our greeting this morning. Lord, may we kneel before you. Strengthen our inner being through your spirit. Help us to be rooted and established in love so we are able to comprehend the greatness of your love. Let us say our opening prayer together. Lord Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, fill our emptiness with your eternal glory. Empower our inner being and strengthen us for ministry. Let our faith in you produce an unshakable trust. Transform our hearts and fill our souls with unwavering love. Amen. Well, folks, you may be seated, and as we take a moment to center our lives for worship, today we are talking about being filled with the fullness of God, Ephesians 3, 14 through 19, filled with the fullness of God. There's two things I want you to consider as we go throughout worship today. First, how full of God are you? Is God overflowing in your life? Is the glory, the love, the grace, the peace, the mercy of God spilling forth from your life that it is reaching others? When people see you, do they see Jesus? That goes for all of you, and it goes for the church as a whole. So the first thing is you can be filled with the fullness of Christ. It's an amazing thought. It's for you to help grow. It's for you to help mature in your faith. It's for you to walk closer with Jesus. But there is something else that comes with being filled with the fullness of Christ. And I wanted to bring the yoke fellow Ben up here to show you. And it's not necessarily very heavy. I could roll it up here and I practiced before service. But it was going to leave like a little streak. And I don't need some wobbly path leading the way up here. Y'all know how to get up here. But I didn't want to do that and ruin y'all's nice carpet. But think of the yoke fellow bin that you walked by. What are we putting in it? Food. There you go. Putting in food. Putting in food. When it comes to putting in food for yoke fellow or something else you are donating, you want to be a help, right? That's what we want to do. The goal of having that bin back there is not to keep it half full, but to keep it full to keep it overflowing. If every single one of us would bring one can a week and there's 30 or so people in here on a Sunday in one month, you'd have 120 cans, that thing would be full. The fullness of Christ in your life not only blesses you by you knowing God better, but it's supposed to overflow in your love for your neighbor. It is supposed to overflow in what you do as a Christian, what you do as a church, and it says that Jesus came to serve and not be served, and if we are to grow into the image and likeness of Christ, then we need to be his hands, his feet, into the community. So just like uh, we want that yoke fellow man back there full, God wants you full of the Holy Spirit. God wants to fill you, not so you can know God less or do God less. A lot of people want a blessing in their life, but then when they get the blessing, then they chillax a little bit from God. But to know God more. When is their next pickup? I have no idea when their next pickup is. Yes, it's always the third Thursday, so yeah. But when you are blessed by God, then you want to share that with others. So in your service and your love for, other, for others, whatever ministry that your heart is, sets out to do, you can know the fullness of God. And the community can know the fullness of God in your heart and in this place when you go out and be his hands and feet. So when all we do, let's fill a barrel Let's fill ourselves, because I'm tired of seeing an empty world, ain't you? Amen. Amen. Well, let's get ourselves full. And then, 
folks is what we're talking about today. So I appreciate you to consider that and center your life so we can all be full of the grace of Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, with that, would you please rise? Open your the faith we sing hymnal this time to number 2077 and let us praise our risen Savior, you alone are holy. Number 2077. Amen. Ah, well, brothers and sisters, you may be seated. Now we come to that time where we give back to God, for God has given so much to us. So if I could have our ushers come forward for our tithes and offerings this morning. praise you for this beautiful day you have created. We thank you for allowing us to be in this space to worship you and give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you so rightly deserve. I pray, Lord, that you will fill each and every one of us in this space today, that we can't help but leave these doors, get out from these walls, and go out and share the gospel with our community. So, Lord, I pray that you take these tithes and, the, and these offerings and that you multiply them for your kingdom purpose. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, now we have that 
most precious of times where if there is something laying on your heart that you wish uh, the other prayer warriors of this church would lift you up in prayer for, it is a wonderful time. Just raise your hand. If you have a joy and you want to brag about how God's been working in your life, we would all love to hear it and celebrate with you. And Steve, I know you got the mic, but I'm going to kick off real first before I forget, because you all know I'm awesome at forgetting things. But uh, graduation season is upon us, and there are colleges and schools, and I mean, just everyone's starting to graduate. It started pretty much yesterday, and for about the next month or so, a lot of people are going to be turning a new chapter in their life. And your very own McKinley did that yesterday. She graduated. So I just want to say congratulations to anyone who is graduating this year. Also, congratulations to everyone who completed another year of school and they have yet another one to go on their educational journey. But congratulations to everyone and just God bless you. So I wanted to say that. And now, Steve, I will turn it to you, sir. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Happy birthday, Barbara. We're going to sing you happy birthday. <laughs> So. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna sing Happy Birthday now. Y'all got the mic working, but <laughs> yeah. Are there any other birthdays today? Huh? Any birthdays? Just Barbara today? Okay. All right. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we need to sing happy birthday to Lester today, too? Oh, all right. Huh? There you go. <laughs> That would make his whole year right there. That'd make his whole year. Yep. Had her a nice t shirt with stuff on it. That's right. Yep. Got a whole church of birthday presents. There you go. Gene. Uh, yesterday I. Yesterday, I uh, went to a shower for L Laurie, Lauren rather, Lauren White, who used to come to church here. She's Lisa J Jordan's daughter. She's expecting in August. I hadn't seen her, I don't know, in a long time. She was in the youth group when I was working, so it was real good to see her again and everything. And then I might say, we were talking about things, but if you've been to Walgreen, it's red nose time, and that money goes to buy I mean, goes to help the homeless children and poverty. And uh, so uh, remember that. They always want you to buy a red nose. So it would be right. funny if the whole church wore red nose. <laughs> That's right. I got my own red nose collection. That'd be fun, a red nose day. The, the requirement, though, is you have to wear them leaving the house, in the car, all the way out here. And then if you go out to lunch afterwards, keep it on. 
That way people notice. That, that'd be fun. But yeah, a great ministry. So yeah. If, it is. It's a great way. It's 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 genius. Yeah. You know, I know you know who Kennedy is, but um, her sister's birthday is the twenty eighth of this month. Well, very good. That's not too far away. All right. Well, thank you. Stephanie's not here today because Bella's sick. Um, she's just not feeling good. She woke up, you know, throwing up and, you know, everything. So mm. just say a little prayer for Bella. She was here yesterday, and she was having fun with Barry and Tina, of course, and everybody else. So, But uh, hopefully she didn't give anybody anything to Barry <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I hope not. I hope she feels better soon. That's rough. That's rough. I'm sorry. We'll pray for her. Are there any more praises, prayers? My niece graduated, and I mentioned her a while back for y'all to be praying for her. This week is when she actually leaves to go to Africa. Her and 10 of her friends, and they're going to be building houses, which I don't know how much experience she has with that, but she, um, you know, I'm so proud of her. Being her aunt, when she was little, we used to say she was my mini-me, but she's, we're nothing alike. She's way braver, smarter. Um, she is something else, and I'm, I'm so proud of her. She's got a heart for Jesus, and, you know, she's had things she's went through, and when Mom died, it really got her to, all of Mom's grandkids, they just had such a relationship with Mom. They'd call her about school stuff or movies or whatnot, so, you know, she misses her, too, but Tuesday she will fly out to Africa, so keep her in your prayers. And then there's someone very dear to me um, who has had cancer. That's, the cancer has come back, and it's in nine places. And she's really not wanting to share it with people, um, but God knows who it is. And I know y'all are faithful to pray. So please just remember a friend of mine who's got a pretty big battle to fight. We will. Thanks. I'm sorry to hear that. We will definitely raise her up in prayer. Are there any more praises, prayer requests, anything laying on your heart you wish to share with everybody? Okay. Well, folks, before we have our silent moment of prayer time, I think it's only right that we... Sing Lester happy birthday too because he might just hear this and that'd make his day too. And then he starts getting all the hats and the shirts and you ain't going to get no sleep, Tootie, if that happens. So we apologize ahead of time. <laughs> but let, let's, uh, let's celebrate Lester. He is such a blessing. So let's sing happy birthday to him. Brothers and sisters, with that, let us have a silent moment of prayer time, and then I will lead us in prayer.
Well, good and gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise you for giving us this space that we can gather together to sing hymns, to lift your name up on high, to hear your word. And I pray that the seeds that have been planted in here, we can go out and we can sow those seeds amongst those who desperately need to hear. So Lord, I pray that you will give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that you will open our hearts and our minds so that we can leave this place, be full to the fullness of God, just overflowing so much that your joy and your peace just radiates from us, that when people see us, they see you, that your light will shine ever brighter through us, that we can go out and help build each other up, to go out and make those disciples. And Lord, while we are in this space, let us remember that you are working on us too, that we are growing in our faith. So Lord, if we do not already make time, let us have those times where we spend quietly in your word, in prayer. And Lord, whatever times that we do set aside for you, let those times be so cherished and so meaningful that we want more and more of you. That we do not just open your word and read it out of routine, but we open your word to hear what you would have to say to us that day. So Lord, equip us and empower us. Let our hearts be overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Transform us from the inside out so that we can be your church, your people. Lord, we praise you for the ways that you are already working in our lives. We thank you for the ways that we can come together as the body of Christ, as brothers and sisters, and do things, different ministries, that we can give, that we can donate, whether it be time, money, whatever it is, that we can come together for things like a yard sale that benefits so many people and provide scholarships to help our future generation make an impact. And Lord, in whatever we do and wherever we go, let us always remember that we are reflecting your glory in our lives. So let us do all for you. Let us never neglect to mention your precious name, to share the gospel with others. Let us do so to build up your kingdom. Lord, whatever might be blocking us from you, whatever sin is in our lives, we confess that to you right now. And if we are not filled with all the fullness of God, if we feel a little bit empty in our life, for whatever reason, I pray, Lord, that you will fill us to overflowing. That you know what tomorrow brings, and because of that, we do not have to worry, but we can rejoice and be glad because you are the beginning and the end. So, Lord, increase our faith. Fill us with a hope that surpasses understanding, a knowledge that surpasses understanding. And let us just kneel and bow our heads in awe of your glory. So Lord, we praise you today and all days. For those who were mentioned, who are on our prayer list, for everyone who is upon our hearts, we lift those names up to you, Lord. We ask that you give them a peace, a comfort, and a healing. Lord, we ask that you make yourself more alive in our lives. And even if we do not have the words to say in the moment, we know that you will give us the words to speak. And even when we go into our prayer closet, we might not have the words to say. But Lord, we come to you with open hearts. So receive us. Let us come to you boldly. 
Let us receive you in our lives. More today, more tomorrow. Lord, we thank you for all you have done for us. We praise you and we give you all the glory and honor you so rightly deserve. And as we say the prayer that you taught us, let us say it with full assurance that those words are faithful and true because you are. So Lord, let our prayers never be just words that we speak. Let it come from our belief for your glory. For that we give you all the praise and the honor. And we say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to be singing a Mother's Day song today as a reminder um, that one of the commandments is to honor your mother and father um, and that the smallest gesture can mean something and so I'm doing it a week early that maybe is kind of a reminder. Four years old, the dirt on my face. I've been out in the yard, picking dandelions all day. I burst through the front door when I gathered enough to give to my mom, to show her my love. And when I held out my hands, she looked down at me. She said, I've never seen flowers as beautiful as these. She's the one that told me about Jesus. She's the one that taught me to sing. She deserves an arm full of roses. She's satisfied with a handful of weeds. Now that I'm older and out on my own, I wish I could find more time to make it back home could have done better I know in my heart than to scribble a note on a last minute card and then she calls on the phone and the first thing she says is I've read this card over and over again she's the one that told me about Jesus. She's the one that taught me to sing. She deserves an arm full of roses. She's satisfied with a handful of weeds. She's always known what true love means and i want her to know what she means to me she's 
He's the one that told me about Jesus. She's the one that taught me to sing. She deserves an arm full of roses. She's satisfied with a handful of weeds. She's more than satisfied with a handful of weeds. Amen. Amen, amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. And a good reminder, Mother's Day coming up, folks. Well, with that, Cameron, I'm going to ask you to come up this morning and read today's scripture. Um, today's scripture is Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. This is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith as a result of having strong roots in love. I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, that you'll be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Well, thank you, Cam. Well, brothers and sisters, that verse, filled with the fullness of God. I wonder what percentage of Christians are currently living in the power of that phrase. How many people strive spiritually to become filled with the fullness of God? You know, you go out into this world and you meet a lot of different people out there. And sometimes you'll go out and someone will say they're a Christian. And then you get to talking and it's after dinner and you're like, really? You know, they, they didn't really act like a Christian. Maybe they were cussing a lot or they haven't been to church in forever something just didn't sit right you wonder how full of god they are and if that ever happens i pray that it takes you a moment to reflect on how full of god you are as well that's something we should all do but it is no wonder that when we go out we see people who claim to be a christian or who are not it's the difference between saying that you are a Christian and behaving as one. It is the difference between word and deed, saying one thing yet doing another. It is the difference between being the church and simply going to church. It is the difference between love of self and love of neighbor. You know, it is not hard to spot someone who does not take their faith seriously. You know, people can think they are good at pretending, but we are always better actors than we really are. We always think that we are better off than we really are. You know, church no longer becomes a priority in some people's lives. If you don't take your faith seriously, church is no longer a priority. You've got better things to do on Sunday, or you're too tired, or you've got something else to do. And if you do miss Sunday service, do you catch one during the week? How important is going to church, being the church, participating in worship, hearing God's word? And if you start losing your priority for being the church, then you're going to start losing the priority of evangelism, going out into the world and making disciples, because that is the business of the church, to go out and to make those disciples, to share the gospel with others. But if church is second or third or fourth or fifth on your list, then I bet evangelism is going to be ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth 
because if you ever did try to share your faith with someone, it can be an intimidating thing, especially if you don't know them, if we're going to be honest. So if you're not being filled with the fullness of God and church is starting to take a back seat in your life, then being the church will start to take a back seat in your life. People who do not take their faith seriously, it is revealed in their priorities, which will affect one's commitments and will ultimately affect their life. It is not hard to spot someone who does not take their Christian faith seriously because they are empty inside. Maybe even a little bit empty. Maybe half empty. But something inside is empty, longing to be filled. They are content with not being fully filled by God because their hunger for worldly things produces a craving they think Christianity cannot fill. God offers his fullness. We offer God what's left. God offers all of himself through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. We offer God only what is safe and convenient. God freely gives. We charge God when things don't go our way. No, brothers and sisters, it is not hard to spot someone who does not take their Christian faith seriously. Because if they are not taking their faith seriously, church being missional, outreach, all the things that come along with being the church, then it leaves room for doubt and complaining. We see a lot of doubt and complaining in the world. Doubt is just an excuse for not mining out the riches of God's word. Doubt is an excuse for not going to God in prayer and patiently waiting for God to give you an answer. Doubt leads to hearing only what we want to hear. It keeps responsibility at bay. Doubt believes prayer won't be answered because the sea will not be parted for me. It doesn't believe that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. It causes us to see but not believe. Doubt keeps us from acting in faith. And then you have complaining, and complaining is not caring. A lot of people might put on an act that they truly care about something that's going on by having a lot of complaints. This and that ain't quite right. We need to do something about it. But complaining isn't caring. Because how many people are constantly struggling with their faith? Far too many people are focused on what is in their power and their control or lack thereof that they don't leave room for faith. And if you don't leave room for, pa for faith, then you leave room for doubt for complaining, for all these things that can pull you into a different direction, that can distract you from God. So many people have done this for so long that they don't even know how to act on faith anymore. They can't quite get rid of it. Even if it was something instilled in you as a little child, something inside says, I can't quite get rid of my faith. But Lord Almighty, I'm struggling. I don't know how to act in faith anymore. We see a lot of that in the world, folks. According to the Pew Research Center, around 1,000 pastors quit the ministry every month. More than 4,000 4, churches close their doors every year, while only 1,000 are being planted. A lot of room for doubt, a lot of room for complaining. A lot of room for not acting in faith. Church attendance is on the decline while sin and lawlessness are on the incline. Sin is being redefined, causing values to be left up to interpretation. The earth is groaning, folks. Violence is spreading, hatred is increasing, and our communities are left suffering. And when people are left suffering, we don't want to see people suffer. We don't want to see people hurting. No one wants to do that. But we tend to only place the hope in ourselves. What can I do to help? What is within my means to help? Where is giving generously anymore? We give God something and we think we are happy with what we give God. 
but we can all give more. Doesn't have to be money. Doesn't have to be food. It can be what the need is. But all of us are guilty of not giving more. All of us are guilty of not living to the fullness of Christ. All of us are guilty with that. How many of us go home and we sleep comfortably in bed knowing that 80% of the world lives on less than $10 a day? That children are starving, dying, getting rained on because they don't have a roof over their head? 80% of the world is in poverty. And we give God what we feel like giving God. But where's the change? We complain about a change. We want to see a change. We even pray, God, let there be a change. But then where are we? What are our ears hearing when God says there can be a change? If you'll go. If you'll be the church. You can be filled with Christ so you can go be that change. You can go be the hands and feet of Jesus. But how much of yourself are you willing to give as well? The birth pains are surely being felt, folks. Because people put their hope in themselves. They put their hope in money and what money can do. People put their hope in guns nowadays because we got to feel safe. People even put their hope in politics thinking, oh, politics is going to be the answer. But then the gap between rich and poor is still widening. Everything the Bible says would happen is happening. And if you are not feeling the birth pains then you are lying to yourself. You are secluding yourself. And you are not seeing with eyes of faith. But folks, don't think faith is just unique to Christianity because this world will never see a lack of misplaced, misplaced faith. There will always be an abundance of misplaced faith in the world because faith is only as good as the object of that faith. It is not the strength of your faith, but the object of your faith that matters. And when you look outside these doors, you turn on the TV, you see a hungry world. You see a world starving to be filled. Now, out of all the religions of the world, Christianity is the only one where its founder is not dead and buried in the ground. Christianity is the only belief system that says you can know God. That is why Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship, folks, because you can know the living God. And not only can you know the living God, but Christianity says you can be filled with all of the fullness of God. You know, God brought water out of a rock. God provided manna. God sent Jesus, the bread of life, to fill those who believe. And God sent his Holy Spirit to literally fill every believer with himself. God knows your hunger pains, and he offers himself to fill your weary soul. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. Today's scripture is a prayer for every person of every age, race, or nation to come to salvation and to be filled with God so completely that the glorious riches of God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Folks, inner strength is vital because outer strength is so fragile. Outer strength doesn't last. It doesn't endure. Outer strength is like a band-aid that covers up the problem. Inner strength is where the real healing takes place. Outer strength looks impressive. It is admired. It is even praised. Kids and adults alike seek gratification. They strive to be rich, but maybe don't want to do the work for that to happen, or the only thing they focus on is getting that money. People go after pleasure. They may or may not want to become famous, but they still crave the benefits of being known. Things on TV and video games, they look cool. So they journey towards something that will never completely satisfy them. And someday in life, 
They sit there and they wonder to themselves, there has got to be more to life than this. There has got to be more to life. And folks, that's because outer strength never lasts. It wastes away like our bodies do. It has an appearance of godliness but denies the power within. It can relieve temporary hunger, but it can never satisfy eternal longing. Only Christianity can do that because only Jesus is the true object of faith that fills a starving world. That is why it is not hard to spot someone who does not take their Christian faith seriously because they are always hungry for something different. They always have to add on something. They always have to supersize something. They got to get something extra added on to it. Being a Christian doesn't just mean getting baptized, joining a church, and attending when it's convenient. It's not about outwardly appearing to do churchy things a few times a year. It doesn't even consist of saying the right things and sounding biblical. It's not even about proclaiming and knowing that the Holy Spirit lives with inside of you. It is allowing Christ to dwell in your hearts through faith. So folks, if you write in your Bible or circle or whatever, make a note of that in today's verse. Dwell in your hearts through faith because this is the great turning point. This is what separates an authentic Christian from a hypocrite. That word dwell. That word dwell doesn't just mean simply inviting Christ into your life. Anyone can say something that sounds impressive. You can invite Christ in your life, but still treat him as a stranger. You can invite Christ into your life and still treat Christ like you are the boss. You're the one calling the shots. Christ is just your lucky penny or whatever you keep in your back pocket for when you need to fall back on something. You can invite Christ into your home and still treat Christ as your guest. But for Christ to dwell in your heart through faith means that Christ is not only invited inside, but he is allowed to go through every single room of your house. He is allowed to go through every single part of your life. He's allowed to go in every room. He's allowed to go on your phone. He's allowed to go on your internet, see your internet search history. He's allowed to go through your photo album. He's allowed to go through your dirty laundry. Christ wants to be all in all for you, not a guest. It is giving Christ full control of your life because he wants to be all in all. Jesus wants to fill you from the inside out, giving you inner strength through faith. Being filled with the fullness of God includes such things like character, perfection, holiness, power, love, among many others. It is growing into the image and likeness of Christ so we can walk in the same way as Jesus. God dwelling in you allows you to live for heaven while still residing on earth. It shows the world that yes, God has done and is doing something about the world's problems, the sin. Jesus fills your true hunger, and it is only Jesus who satisfies the soul. And there's another word that you need to circle if you do that, keep a reminder of it, and that is the Greek word that is used to fill, fill with the fullness of Christ. That word fill is pleroma, and it means a cargo net that is just bursting full or a hollow space that is crammed full. Just overflowing, right? God wants all of you. To be filled with the fullness of God is to be all in for Christ because Christ is all in for you. That is something that this world is lacking. And that is Christians living all in for Christ. Being completely filled with the fullness of God. Going out in the power of God and going out with all the faith that has been given to you that you can go out and you can make disciples, that you can go out and you can be those missional people, that you can go out and you can make a difference for the kingdom. That is not being half in. That is not even being three quarters in. That is all in, folks. 
To be filled with God means more of God and less of you. If you're getting full somewhere else, you're leaving Christ out while allowing temptation in, sin in. You're allowing room for something else to get in. Growing in one's faith is being filled with Christ. It is maturing in one's faith. It is becoming holy as he is holy, or as John Wesley said, going on to perfection. No, believers will never fully know the greatness of God on this side of eternity, but being filled with God enables every believer to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is. The strength you have as Christians equals how full you are in God. Just as a starving person loses physical strength, a starving Christian loses spiritual strength. If you're not filled with the fullness of God, then you are leaving room for other things. And this world has a lot of other things that look awfully appealing. The more we understand and receive the love of God in our lives, the fuller of him we will be. You can be full, folks, but you may not be full. Or you might even think that, hey, I'm pretty empty. I'm running on fumes here. Maybe you, have been, maybe you have been through so much in your life. Maybe your faith has been so tested that you don't feel like you can even go on. I can't get rid of my faith, but I don't know what to do with it anymore. Your life might be so full of pain, of hurt, of sin, doubt, insecurities, whatever. So many other things that there is very little room in your life anymore for joy, for peace and for the fulfillment found only in God's love. But brothers and sisters, you can know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. When you allow Christ to dwell within your heart, to have full reign as King of kings and Lord of lords, then you will be filled with the fullness of God. And for that, I want to show you a little uh, example before we partake of communion and become full of the body of Christ. This might represent your life. And these rocks in here can represent things that are stopping you from being full. Maybe you feel some of the joy of God in your life. Maybe some of the days are fine. Some are better than others. But your life can't hold the fullness. There's not enough room for everything. There's simply not enough room. And nothing short of you letting go of some things, beginning to take some things out of your life, that's what's going to make the difference. So maybe you have hatred of your parents or of somebody who has wronged you in the past, and you have to let go of that in your life. Or maybe it's forgiving someone that's been bitter to you. Maybe they're still being bitter to you. Maybe it's a coworker or a family member or someone you thought was a friend that's been treating you terribly, been bullying you. You gotta let go of that. Or maybe it is unforgiveness. Maybe you have not forgiven somebody who's wronged you. You haven't done that yet. You know you need to, but you're not quite there yet. But Jesus says, let go of that. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Maybe it's those insecurities that have kept you back from stepping out in faith, from being a faithful Christian, a faithful church. Maybe it's some insecurities that have caused that. And then again, maybe it's just doubt. You know God exists. You know Jesus came. You know you are saved, but you're having a faith battle at the moment. you got some doubt in your life. And while this little stone might feel like a boulder, Jesus says, I got you, man. Just let go of that. Because when you let go of that, whatever the hurts, Christ says, get that out of your life. And then you will begin to understand the fullness that is offered to you in Christ Jesus. And I want to show you one more thing, folks. And then we're going to have communion together. Maybe you're sitting there today, and you're like, I get it. 
I have felt the joy and the peace of God in my life. I know I am a Christian. I have worked hard serving the Lord and coming to church. I've been fairly faithful, and I think I'm about half full, something like that. But I have felt the joy in my life. Some days are still easier than others, but I have felt that. But you begin to take it for granted. You have allowed some sin, maybe some disbelief, those insecurities, those doubts, whatever it is, you have left something in your life to discolor that clean, holy life that you once had. And everything you do, you now see through that discoloration. And you hear messages on TV and you hear the preacher talking about, oh, you can be full of Christ. How do you do that? The only way to be filled again with the fullness of God is to allow God to pour back into you, to pour the fullness of God back into you, to allow God to dwell in your heart and in your soul, to call God the King of kings and Lord of lords. Is it a step of faith? You bet it is. It's why God intended it to be. But if you're going to be all in for God, God's already all in for you, brothers and sisters. The proof of that is what we're about to do by partaking communion. God is all in for you. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. God says your cup can be full too. You can have that clean, holy life. You can have your emptiness filled. And it's only then that you can begin to know the surpassing, the amazing, the almighty love of God and what Jesus Christ has done for you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, with that, I ask that you turn to page 12 in your hymnal, a service of word and table. Doug, if you would come forward, please. Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites all to his table. Would you please come forward? Satisfied and then. 
For brothers and sisters, now that I pray you are filled to the fullness of Christ our Lord, let us go from this place in victory and confidence in the power of our Lord, but not before we sing our last hymn. It is number 2056. Let us praise God by singing, God is so good. to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 